Hey, welcome back everybody. Today what we're going to cover is drawing using scale factor. So we're going to do an example where one of the pictures is uh, going to be enlarged and we're going to do another example where we're going to do a reduction. And I'm going to show you how to use scale factor to figure that out. So this shouldn't be too bad and you don't have to be a big time artist to figure it out either. So the first example here, it says dilate using a scale factor of one half to draw a reduction. So we're going to do a scale factor of one half. What that means is we're going to take all the dimensions of that irregular figure right there and we're going to multiply all those dimensions by one half or if you want to 0.5. I would say the first thing you want to do is because I think a lot of times in when I teach this Typically, when I teach this, people just want to start drawing the figure out and, and, and seeing how it comes out. But that's really the last thing you want to do is start the drawing. So the first thing you want to do is kind of set up all the dimensions here and, and know what everything is. Okay, this side right here is 14 units. I think I'm using centimeter grid, a centimeter grid right there. So that's, you could write 14 centimeters if you want to, but that's really not important. The important thing is that we know that it's 14. Uh, right here, this is four units. Right here, this is two. Right here, this is also four units. Now notice, I'm doing every single dimension here. I'm not forgetting anything. So that's two units right there. Okay, so now I have everything marked off. I'll, I've got all the possible sides listed in, and we have it labeled in terms of uh, what the measurement is. So the largest measurement is 14 units. The smallest measurement is two units. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this and we're gonna take each and every one of those measurements and we're going to multiply them by the scale factor. So that's what you wanna do. So you wanna do the measurement times scale factor. That's how you wanna set these all up. So we're going to do 14 times 1 half. We're going to do, and I'm not going in any specific order here, we're going to do 4 times 1 half. We're going to do 2 times 1 half. We're going to do 8 times 1 half. And I have a 6. So go through these one by one and just multiply by 1 half. Now a little, little math hack here. Remember, when you multiply by 1 half, it's the same thing as dividing by what number? It's the same thing as dividing by two, isn't it? So 14 times one half is like 14 divided by two, which is seven. So that makes sense right there. If we're, if we're reducing by one half, everything should be half of what it once was. So four times one half is gonna be two. Two times one half is gonna be one. Eight times one half is going to be four. And six times one half is going to be three. Now here comes the most difficult part, which is drawing it. I think um, this was all pretty easy. I think multiplying by one half was not a tough chore. I think uh, counting how many squares each side, how many units each side was, that wasn't tough. But when it comes to drawing, this is where everyone typically has the toughest time. And what I would suggest doing is just go one, one side at a time. You know, sometimes when people are, are are initially doing this problem, they look at this entire picture and they think, you know what, I better just draw it all right now. And it's not really the strategy you wanna follow when you're doing this. I would just go side by side, one at a time, and you should be okay. So for instance, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna start with the longest side because usually that's the easiest um, thing to start with because you wanna be able to fit it on that graph that's uh, available. So we want to do 14 units. Um, now we know that dilated to 7 units because we did multiply that by 1 half. I'm going to draw a section starting right here. It doesn't really matter where you start, but what matters is that we make it 7 units. Be careful. I think, uh, you know, just like I said, just through my experience, the biggest mistake people make when they count is they start counting like this. They go 1, 2, 3, 4 five, six, seven, and you can see you'd be short because that line needs to go to right there. So there you go, there's our first side right there. That's a seven unit side right there. 
and go one at a time. And I think like slow and steady, those type of principles here all come into play here. Now this next one, four units, if I look at my listings there, four units dilated to two. So now I'm gonna go down two. And then right here, you know, it's making a left turn right there. It's going left and it goes, it says two units there, but our dilation says that two times one half is one. So I'm gonna go one unit to the left here in my um, scale drawing. Right there. Now in the, in the next part of the scale drawing, it starts going down. So now it goes down four units. Now the dilation for that is two. So I'm gonna go down two units and I should be labeling this as well. And that's one, I'm gonna put two units here. And then it takes another left turn right there. And that says four units. And the dilation for that says that it's gonna be two. So I'm gonna go two units this way. And then it goes up, it makes an upturn. There are two units and that's gonna go, we're gonna go up one because that's what it says right there. So you can see this is this can get a little a little bit difficult because you want to go one side at a time when you're doing this one side at a time. After that, it takes a left turn of eight units, and now according to our information here, eight units dilated to four units that reduced to four units. So we're going to go four units to the left. One, two, three, four. And it's a matter of just closing it and you make sure that you know that's three units. And that's what it said right there, because that used to be six, so now it's three. Right there, there's our scale drawing. Now that scale drawing is one half of what it was at the beginning. So that's one half scale. I know one half scale, you might think, well, it should look smaller, but remember, we scaled everything. All the, all the dimensions of that shape were scaled by one half or multiplied by one half, which made it every side or every dimension and every measurement of every dimension one half of what it once was. That was how you do a reduction. When it comes to the drawing, that's the toughest part, but just go side by side and just, just try to you know follow one side at a time and kind of go around the shape and try not to look at the whole thing at once. I think that's a key. And if you're not looking at the whole thing at once, it th makes it much more manageable. Just look at one side at a time. Now example two right here, we're doing an enlargement. It says dilate using a scale factor of three to draw an enlargement of the figure below. So just like we did on the problem before this, we're going to go ahead and write in all the measurements here. So these are not tough, right? That's one, that's two, this is one, this is three, this is one, this is two, and I'm just writing these numbers in. Now this one says dilate using a scale factor of three. Scale factor of three means you're gonna multiply by three. So I know I didn't give you a ton of space here to work, but you know, you're gonna do one times three, you're gonna do two times three, we're gonna do three times three, and I'm just gonna use each one of these numbers once, and we're gonna do four times three. Those are the only numbers we really have to kind of worry about. Okay, so there are our scales right there. I, I went ahead and I multiplied. Any side that has a length of one is now gonna be three units. Any side that has a length of two is gonna be six units. Any side with a length of three is gonna be three times greater, and that's gonna be nine units long. And any side with a length of four is gonna be three times greater which is going to be 12 units. So this is why I gave you a lot of space on that graph right there to, to be able to fit that in. Because our longest segment, our longest measurement is gonna be 12 units. So if you, if you end up planning this wrong and you, you try to fit it in that corner right there, you're not gonna fit it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the longest segment right there. And I'm gonna start with that one. It, it doesn't really matter with what you start with, but. Uh, I'm just going to start with the four because I want to be able to fit that in there and I make sure if I can get that in there, I'll be able to get the rest of it in there because I'll be able to see how much space is left. So that unit I just highlighted, that uh, measurement that I just highlighted is four units. So that is a dilation of times three. It's going to be four times three, which is going to be 12. 
Now keep in mind that when you're measuring 12 units, remember that we're talking about 12 squares. We're not, just ta we're not just counting lines, we're talking about how many squares it is. So I went ahead and I drew all those numbers in there just to be sure. I've got 1 through 12 in there and I know for certain that, that is 12 units long. Okay, so that, like I said, that's the, the longest part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow this shape. And like I, like I was doing on the previous one, I'm just going to go one side at a time. I'm going to go to this part right here. That's a side length of one. Now that's going to scale up by a factor of three. So now it's going to be three units long, one times three. So that's three right there. Now we're going to make a turn north. And that one says two, two units. And that means it's going to be a it's going to be scaled by three, so two times three is six. I cut this way too close, because six units, and I don't even have a, another line up there, but I'm going to kind of infer that that point is right there, but that is six units right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six units. So look at that. I just gave myself barely enough room. I, I knew I needed to use a big graph for that one, but I didn't know I was cutting it that close. So we've got six units there. And back to the drawing here. We just did that. That ended up scaling up to six. Now we're going to scale this side. That's one. Now that's going to be multiplied by three, which is three. So that's three units right there. And notice how like when I'm doing this, I'm labeling every single side. Don't make your scale drawing without your scale measurements in there as well. Now that was two. That was the same thing as six. So I'm just going to go to this point right here. We just did that part. We're going to make a right turn one unit. Now one unit is going to scale three units. One times three is three. I'm going to put a three there. So we just did this. Now we're going to take a turn south there, three units. Now three times three is nine. And now I'm going to make a left turn here, one unit. Now one unit times three is going to be three. I'm going to label that as three right there. And then we're going to go back north, two units. Now two times three is six. So we just did that and that. And then we're going to make a left turn there, one unit. Now one times three is three. So we're going to go left three units. Then we're going to go down again. We're going to go south. Now on the picture it's three, but three times three times the scale factor is nine. And as you can see, I really just gave myself enough room there. And then the only th part that's left right here is that is to close. And that was one unit. So there's our figure right there completely scaled up by a factor of three. So now it's three times greater. So what do you think happens, you don't have to answer this question right now, but what do you think happens to the area? Is the area, is that also gonna be th three times greater? You know, it's, it's something really easy. You could check, you could check the area really easily by counting the number of squares in this and you can count the number of squares in here. And you might be surprised what you find, because it's not what you might think. But that was not the exercise today. The exercise today was just drawing. That was all we had to do. So we did one example here where we did a reduction, where it got smaller, because we multiplied by fractions on all those. And we did another example where we did an enlargement, so everything got bigger. And that's how it should work. And you can see the toughest part of this, I think the, the hardest thing of this, is just doing the drawing itself. And I don't think I picked really complicated drawings. As you can see, they, they can get complicated. Now your assignment for today, which is due um, on Tuesday, next week, our last week of school, really. And our assignment is to just, you guys have to do two problems. And one of them, your first problem right there, is to dial it using a scale factor of two thirds. You're gonna do a scale factor of two thirds. Now to give you guys a hint there, you're gonna multiply everything, every dimension, every measurement of that shape, it's not a very complicated shape, by two thirds. And I'll tell you what, no matter what you do, you should always get a whole number. You shouldn't get any 
I'm just giving you guys a hint here. You shouldn't get any decimals. If you get an answer like 4.3 repeating or something like that, you did something wrong. All right, so we're multiplying everything by two thirds. And when you're done figuring out the, um, the lengths, you should get a whole number. Not that you, it's not impossible to get decimals. I mean, that's going to happen. But uh, for convenience purposes, I made everything come out, the examples that I made, I made everything come out to a whole number. Same thing for number three, but that's an enlargement. So that's a plus sign right there. And you're gonna uh, use a scale factor of 1.5 which means you're going to multiply everything by one and a half, 1.5. Every psi length is gonna get multiplied by one and a half. And if you can see, it's pretty easy when you really think about it. And so I wanna see your drawings. So your homework, your assignment, if you choose to accept it, is to do both these drawings right here and turn it in. Now, I don't care how you turn it in. If you want to take a picture of it, and send it to me in your Google Classroom, that's fine. If you wanna draw this on your own scratch paper and make sure everything's labeled, that's fine too. I'll post this on a Google Doc as well. And if you're comfortable with it, you could probably draw, use the drawing tool on Google Docs as well and draw your figure as well. So that's up to you. I really don't mind how you turn it in, but it, you just have to turn it in in some form or fashion and make sure it's done right and you're using the right scale factor okay so that does it everybody enjoy your weekend okay enjoy your holiday and i'll see you later take care